pitchers and catchers report in just a little over a week. As the Halos head down to Arizona, it's time for us to do our roster recap. First up, Logan O'Hoppy, Matt Dice, and the rest of the catching depth as part of this Angels team. We'll talk about what they look like headed into 2024. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. Of course, if you want to give back to Mike and I, the Super Halo Bros, for all the Super Halo content, there's a few ways you can help us out. First of all, head to Apple Podcasts, get on there, give us a rate and a review. And if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that like button, that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. We'd love to have you as part of our Locked On Everyday or Family here on Locked On Angels. And whether you're watching or listening, come on over to YouTube, find today's episode, get in the comments. It's the best way to get a hold of Mike and I and get in on the conversation. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. You can make every moment more with FanDuel. New customers, if you join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for being here for this episode of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every single day. Of course, you've got John Frisch here. I'm one half of Locked On Angels and the Super Halo Bros. Unfortunately, Mike is out with a bit of a, a cold bug right now. So I'll be starting out this roster recap on today's show. We're going to be taking a look at all of the different positions that the Halos have around the diamond and in the outfield and, of course, pitching when it comes to starting pitching and relief pitching. Today, we're starting with the catchers. So we're going to get into a conversation about Logan O'Hoppy, Matt Thice. And the depth beyond those two, first of all, I do want to say thank you to every single one of you who took the time to vote for Locked On Angels in the Sports Podcast Awards for the Best Baseball Podcast. Guess what? We took home third place, everybody, and it's all thanks to your votes and all of you who rose to the occasion and got in there and voted for Locked On Angels. Listen, third place, the bronze medal, as they referred to it, is nothing to be ashamed of because... First place went to David Sampson of Nothing Personal, who's a former GM and has a national audience, so no shame in that. And then second place went to the uh, the Mets podcast, the official Sportsnet NY Mets podcast. So hey, we went up against a national voice and a TV network, and we came in third place. So props to you guys for helping us get there. Uh, we really appreciate that. Mike and I, thank you so much for helping us earn third place for best baseball podcast. From now on, it's nothing but bronze takes and bronze insight from here on out. So let's go. Speaking of insight and takes, hey, let's talk about Logan O'Hoppy because he is penciled in to be the everyday starting catcher for the Halos in 2024. Real quick, let's recap his 2023 and his projections for 2024 According to Fangraph, so Ohapi in 2023, he got into 51 games. He had 14 home runs, 29 RBIs. Here's his slash line, 236 average, a 296 on base, a 500 slugging, and a 796 OPS. That was good for a 113 weighted runs created plus. According to Fangraphs, remember, 100 is league average. Logan was 13% better than league average. Gives you a nice little picture of how he performed last season. Remember that he only got into 16 games before we lost him to shoulder surgery from March 30th to April 20th. Ohapi went 283 average, a 339 on base, 547 slugging, and an 886 OPS. Talk about a strong start to the season. And man, just to see him get derailed from that shoulder surgery was so heartbreaking. Uh, during that time, he had 15 hits, two doubles, four home runs, 13 RBIs, four walks, and 15 strikeouts. When Ohapi came back in mid-August, he played the rest of the season. He went 217, 279 on base, 481 slugging, and a 759 OPS. That amounted to 28 hits, 
two, uh, sorry, four doubles, 10 home runs, 16 RBIs, 10 walks, and 33 strikeouts. The crazy thing is, is that when Ohapi came back in August, he had this incredible home run pace that he was on, where, according to baseball reference, if he had kind of played that out over 162, he would have landed at like 46 home runs. So he was on a tear in terms of home runs and the pace he was on coming back from the injury. So again, the results in terms of the slash line, they were okay. But overall, decent numbers, decent first full season for him. Again, it wasn't a full season considering it was only 51 games because of the shoulder surgery. So I think Logan Ohapi is primed and ready to come back in 2024 and make an impact. In fact, here are his fan graphs projections for 2024. They say he's going to get into 105 games, hit 21 home runs, and he'll bat around 254, a 337 on base, a 469 slugging, and an 806 OPS, and he'll have a weighted runs created plus of 119 and a 1.8 fan graphs war. Interesting note here, Adley Rutschman got into 108 games as a catcher and 46 as a DH. And Fangraphs has Logan Ohapi at 105 games. So my question here is, and maybe whether you're watching or listening, you can come on over to YouTube and answer this in the comments. But I'll be a little rhetorical here, and I'll ask it out loud. Do you think we're going to see a lot of Logan Ohapi at DH like Rutschman? Or do we think most of those DH opportunities are going to go to Trout or... Rendon or Renhifo or Adele. And the fact is, depending on how Logan O'Hoppy starts this season, I think you're going to want his bat in there as often as possible. And he's not going to catch every game, obviously. Adley caught 108 last year. O'Hoppy's penciled in for 105, according to fan graphs. But I think that if Logan O'Hoppy can get into this lineup one way or another, whether it is catching, whether it is as a DH, I think that consistency is going to be really good for him. Now, let's talk defense. The offense is all well and good, and certainly he didn't like the way that he ended his season. Uh, he did speak to Trent Rush on the Angels Recap podcast recently and said he didn't like the way he came back uh, when he returned from the injury. I mean, you know, we're all excited about that home run pace, but obviously that's not going to be sustainable over 162, but it is fun to think about. So I don't think that we have much to worry about in terms of offense, especially when you consider the way Logan O'Hoppy got off to a great start in 2024. But I want to bring up his defense because it's a definitely an area that Logan O'Hoppy can improve in in 2024. And I'm going to use two catchers. We've already talked about Rutschman. We're going to talk about him again. And I'm going to talk about Gabriel Marino from the Diamondbacks as like a reference point for some of these defensive metrics that Logan O'Hoppy can improve in. First of all, blocks above average. This is the act of preventing pass balls and wild pitches. Gabriel Marino was at positive 10 in terms of blocks above average. Adley Rutschman was at seven. Logan O'Hoppy was at one. Now, obviously, he only got into those 50-some-odd games, and not even all of those were starting at catcher. but it does show that there is room for improvement when it comes to Logan O'Hoppy and preventing pass balls and wild pitches. Uh, catcher framing runs. So this essentially thinks about the way that how often does a catcher's framing earn his pitcher a strike versus a ball? Well, last year, Adley Rutschman had five catcher framing runs saved. I know it's a mouthful. Gabriel Marino had negative two catcher framing runs saved. Logan O'Hoppy was negative five. So out of those three, Logan O'Hoppy certainly has room to improve there. Now, catcher pop time, obviously, we're probably all familiar with this, but just a refresher here, measures the time from the moment the pitch hits the catcher's mitt to the moment the ball reaches the fielder's projected receiving point at the center of the base. So how long before they catch it and throw it to the second baseman or the third baseman? Gabriel Marino had a 1.90 pop time to second base. Rutschman is 1.91 pop time to second base. Logan O'Hoppy 
was 2.09 pop time to second. And you might be thinking that, well, what's the difference? It's not that much. Well, when it comes to the decimal points in pop time, those are everything. So he was actually last among qualified catchers in the league this season in terms of pop time. Finally, catchers caught stealing above average. This is a stat cast metric designed to help you understand the skill of catching and throwing out runners on steal attempts. Uh, Marino had nine catchers caught stealing above average. He was first in the league, actually. Adley Rutschman was at zero, so essentially league average. Logan O'Hoppy was negative three. Now, there is a new catching coach this year, Jerry Naren, former Halo, uh, who has been a manager in his time. He has been part of many coaching staffs. He's coming in to be the catching coach this year. So we will hopefully see some improvements from Logan O'Hoppy defensively. I, I honestly am okay with what he's going to bring to the table offensively. I do think that there is a lot of room for him to improve defensively. But again, like you mentioned, talking to Trent Rush on the Angels Recap podcast, he wasn't happy with how things ended last year, but he said, uh, he feels confident. He feels like he's in a good spot. He's never felt more prepared for a season. So with Logan O'Hoppy coming into 2024, I think that we can expect some really awesome things uh, in terms of his offense. And we should expect some really good defense. And hopefully he'll make improvements in that regard. Hey, thanks for making Locked on Angels your first listen every single day. We're just getting started here on Locked on Angels. Coming up. Does Ron Washington get Matt Theis to shape up and become a stronger catcher for the Halos in 2024? We're going to ask that question, get into Matt Theis's defense and offense, and we're going to talk about all of that in just a minute. Hey, today's show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Happy Super Bowl week to all of those who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seats on the couch. You got to stake your claim early. You got to get there early. You got to get to the party early. Maybe find that comfy chair and uh, just make that your own, right? Do that on Sunday. Grab your favorite football snacks and place some super bets. And you can do that this weekend because FanDuel has so many ways for you to end this NFL season with a W or a dub, as we like to say, or two or three. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, go Niners, but FanDuel has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points are going to be scored, and so much more. Listen, if you're not familiar with the 49ers, you need to vote and bet on Christian McCaffrey because he is a lock to score a touchdown. That's coming from me. New customers, if you join today, you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. So all you have to do is visit fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. You can make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Hey, it's the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every single day. We appreciate you being here. Locked On Everydayers, don't forget that Locked On has launched the first ever 24-7 national sports streaming channel on YouTube. Just search Locked On Sports Today on YouTube for all the latest stories of the day and 24-7 coverage of all your favorite sports nonstop every single day. So head on over to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, and get 24-7 sports all day long from the world's first national sports 24 seven streaming channel. So we covered Logan Ohapi in our last segment and somebody who figures to be backing him up is Matt Theis. Uh, obviously he had to put in a lot of work last season when Logan Ohapi was injured and Max Stassi was uh, let's see, how do we put this? He was dealing with the birth of his son, the early birth of his son. So baseball was the last thing on Max Stassi's mind last season. And so, uh, and rightfully so. And so really it became Matt Theis and Chad Wallach as the tandem who had to step up and be the catchers for the Halos 
last season. Um, he is a Matt Theis is a left-handed bat. And to be honest, he's got some power, but as Mike and I have talked about on the show before, he's got this big loopy swing that it feels like it, it it's too automatic to be natural. Like it's <laughs> if you push the button a thousand times, you'd get the same swing a thousand times from Matt Theis. And and to be fair, when he makes contact, he hits that ball really hard. But the problem is a matter of when he makes contact and when he hits the ball. And so he's got to learn to make some adjustments in his big loopy swing. Again, powerful swing, and he's a powerful dude, but his contact has been an issue. Uh, and we saw that on display in 2023. Let's actually take a look at where Thais landed in 2023, he had a 214 average, a 319 on base percentage, and a 340 slugging percentage. That was good for a 659 OPS and a weighted runs created plus of 84. And although he doesn't rank among qualified hitters because he doesn't have the minimum plate appearances that he would need to qualify, he does have a 19% chase rate, which is really good a 11.7% walk rate, a 10.4% barrel rate. So he's getting the meaty part of the bat to the ball. And he had a 110 mile per hour max exit velocity. So the hardest hit ball he hit all season was 110 miles an hour. Now for reference, uh, Ronald Acuna Jr. led all of MLB with a, listen to this, 121.2 miles per hour off the bat. That was the highest maximum exit velocity last season. Uh, Otani had a 118.6 max exit velo off the bat. Was that the uh was that the home run to right that went in the section between the bleachers and right field, you know, where the where the uh the guy comes out and and sweeps the the dirt and whatnot. I think that's where it landed. It was like Barry Bonds territory. That home run was insane. 118.6 off the bat last season. Now, Matt Theis, with his 110 max exit velocity, he's in and around the likes of Freddie Freeman, JT Real Muto, uh, Jonah Heim, catcher of the Rangers, and Kyle Tucker. So some pretty good company for Matt Theis to be in with that 110 mile per hour max exit velocity. But he certainly has room for improvement at the plate. And listen to this. He has a great chase rate, obviously. Again, 19% is pretty good. It's pretty down there. He doesn't go outside the zone after pitches as often as the rest of the league. Uh, on pitches outside the zone, Matt Theis has only swung at 23.7% of them. The rest of the league has swung at 32%. So Theis is above league average in that regard. In the zone, Matt Theis swings at 76% of pitches in the zone, and the league was about 68.8%. Now, that shows me that Theis sees the ball very, very well, but his problem, and I've mentioned this already, is contact, especially in the zone, and that's where you want to be making the most contact. Overall, his contact percentage pitches inside and outside the zone adds up to 69.8% while the rest of the league average was 76.4%. So Matt Theis about five points under league average. Theis is also below average on making contact in the zone. Theis sits at 76.2%. The rest of the league sits at 85.4%. So almost 10% higher than Matt Theis. Finally, when you, when you look at his swinging strike percentage, it all makes sense because Theis has a swinging strike percentage of almost 14%, while the league average was 11%. So what am I getting at here? Listen, Matt Theis has a really good eye at the plate. He doesn't chase very often. He swings at pitches in the zone. But the problem is, is that he doesn't make contact with those pitches in the zone. Listen, his career strikeout percentage is 28.7 and the league over the same amount of time was 22.9. Now my question for you, and I'll answer this myself, looking back at Cody Bellinger's struggling years, 
he actually had kind of a similar problem with making contact in the zone, and he was also under league average, kind of like Matt Theis is. Do you think Johnny Washington, who worked with Cody Bellinger last year, do you think that he could help Theis at the plate this coming season? I hope that's something that can happen because, honestly, if he can help Cody Bellinger, I, I tried to do a video comparison and I don't have the uh, the editing skills, if you will. But the truth is, I think that Thice and Cody Bellinger kind of had the same big loopy swing. <laughs> and I think that Thice's could be corrected. Maybe he doesn't put up Bellinger numbers, but he certainly could be making more contact in the zone and getting better at that. And I think if, you know, Thice swings it a little less harder, kind of like Cody Bellinger did, takes off some of that exit velocity, that hard hit velocity, then maybe he could get more base hits uh, from time to time, which would be great to see from Matt Theis. Now, now that we've talked about his offense, let's talk about Matt Theis behind the dish. And I know that a lot of you are probably screaming at me going, what a terrible guy he was behind the dish. Well, I think we all have that feeling, and Mike and I certainly were guilty of it. The the catcher's interference uh, that happened early on with Theis was so frustrating. I think it even cost the Angels that game where there were two catcher's interferences from Matt Theis. But let me tell you what actually is true about Matt Theis as a catcher on defense behind the dish. Theis had three blocks above average behind the plate. That's the same as Martin Maldonado and Will Smith, the catcher, obviously. Uh, he had a negative one catcher framing run. So again, think about how well a catcher can steal a strike for their pitcher. And then there's like a run value atten- attached to that. So that's negative one. Uh, Gabriel Marino had the same negative one catcher framing runs. So we just got done talking about him with Logan Ohapi. Well, Thice is right there with Marino. And that's actually better than Will Smith of the Dodgers. The pop time for Matt Theis, 1.98 seconds. That's similar to Salvador Perez, Kyle Higashioka, Alejandro Kirk, some other catchers around the league. And then he had a zero in catchers caught stealing above average. So essentially, he was right in line, making all of the, the throws that he should be making to second base, getting the guys out that he should be catching Uh, when he tries to pick somebody off. So again, he was perfectly average is what you can say about Matt Theis there. Uh, Another catcher with zero caught stealing above average, Adley Rutschman. So there you go. Two guys making all the plays that they should. Now, I I, I told you I was going to bring up this question. Uh, We Theis had the catcher's interference problem last season. Uh, Then, (laughs) and we weren't the only ones to point this out. There were actually a lot of Locked on every day or she pointed this out for us, but it was that big loopy rainbow throw, that little league throw that Matt Theis would do. And and every time he caught a pitch, he would throw it back to the pitcher and it was just like, like it made that noise. There you go. If that didn't take you back to like baseball on the Super Nintendo, I don't know what will. I think, and, and I'll ask this question to you. Does Ron Washington get Matt Theis to clean that stuff up? Because catcher's interference can't happen. You can't be throwing these big loopy rainbow tosses back to your pitcher because guys can steal and they can move on the bases when you're lobbing it back to your pitcher. So in my opinion, I have to believe that Ron Washington is going to make Matt Theis clean that stuff up because you and I and other Locked On Everydayers, we were screaming for it every single day and nobody on the coaching staff last season fixed that in Matt Theis. So I think if anybody is going to do it, and I, I honestly I think it would be funny if it got called out on day one when pitchers and catchers report, Ron Washington sees Theis throw that ball back to the pitcher and goes, what the heck are you doing? So I hope that's something that will happen, and I expect that to happen. I expect that Ron Washington is going to help Matt Theis clean some of those things up. All right, we've talked about Logan O'Hoppy. We've talked about Matt Theis. What about the rest of the catching depth 
that the Angels can go to in the event that they need to. Now, we're all crossing our fingers for a full and healthy season from Logan Ohapi, of course. Obviously, we don't want to see Matt Theis get hurt either, but the Angels have a lot of catching depth behind those two in the event of an injury or somebody needs to, you know, be sent down. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think Logan Ohapi is going to get sent down, but you never know. You might need some time where a backup catcher comes up and plays for you. So let's take a look at some of the catching depth that the Angels have for 2024. The first up, everybody is familiar with this guy, Chad Wallach. They brought him back on a minor league deal back in December. Obviously, he was with the team for most of the season last year. It became Matt Theis and Chad Wallach as the tandem when it was originally going to be Logan Ohapi and Max Stassi. But let's talk about Chad Wallach's 2023. In that season, he hit with a 197 average, a 259 on base percentage, a 376 slugging, and a 635 OPS in 65 games. I do have to say, Wallach felt kind of clutch in some moments last year. Maybe, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but I go back to that Texas series and Wallach hitting that home run. Like that just felt so great and and so good to see because Wallach feels like a guy you want to cheer for. And I know he struggled last year, but with Ohapi getting hurt early on in the season, again, it was him and Matt Theis. Wallach wasn't anything special behind the plate defensively, but he did keep things around league average over the last year. So again, I'll say a perfectly adequate backstop at league average in a lot of ways. So he was negative one caught stealing above average. So wasn't catching everybody that he was trying to throw out Uh, zero catcher framing runs, which means he wasn't stealing anything extra, but he was earning the strikes that his pitchers deserved, which often doesn't happen, especially with these umpires behind the dish. So Wallach was very good at receiving uh, the pitches last year and earning the strikes that were deserved. He had a 1.99 pop time. That was the 23rd percentile in the majors. So not, not great, but you know, it's a backup. The worst stat though, was his blocks above average. He was negative seven in blocks above average, the worst of his career. He could just not stop things from getting past him when the moment arose last year in 2022, I should say he was at zero and he even had a positive seven blocks above average with the Marlins in 2020. So that's Chad Wallach, somebody we're all familiar with, someone that we're all comfortable talking about. Give you a little bit of his offense and his defense there. This is a guy that I'm interested in. Francisco Mejia is a non-roster invite to spring training. Uh, he came up with Cleveland, the Guardians. He spent time with the Padres and the Rays. He actually had his best season with the Rays, of course, because they figure out how to get the best out of everybody. This was in 2021. He hit 260, had a 322 on base percentage, 416 slugging, and a 738 OPS. Fangraph says his best season in 2021, he came in with an OPS plus of 107. That's 7% better than league average. And when you're league average or above as a hitter, as a catcher, that's pretty good. <laughs> so most, most catchers are not going to hit at league average or better than that, unless you're a superstar, right? Uh, like Logan O'Hoppy. We'll see. We'll see what he does this season. Last year, Mejia got into 50 games with Tampa Bay. He had 160 plate appearances, 34 hits, 11 doubles, five home runs, 10 RBIs. That came out to an average of 227, a 258 on base, a 400 slugging, not too shabby for a catcher, and a 658 OPS. That was good for an OPS plus of 80. That's 20% below league average. Now that's his offensive numbers, but catchers obviously are here for their defense. So as a catcher last year, Francisco Mejia had negative one blocks above average, zero caught stealing above average, a 1.95 pop time that ranked in the 59th percentile in the majors across all catchers and their pop time and a negative four catcher framing Runs Now, I looked over his career since 2017, and 
He's not going to steal any strikes for his pitchers. He's not going to do that very often. Um, so that's not something he is uh, elite at. But he can throw guys out at league average and usually hovers around zero to one, uh, or I should say zero to negative one blocks above average. So he's pretty consistent in throwing guys out and keeping the ball in front of him over his career. I could definitely see the Angels offering Mejia a deal to keep him on as catching depth this season. Uh, this signing just happened on Thursday. Caleb Hamilton, who has only had 55 major league innings behind the dish. Uh, MLB trade rumors had an interesting write-up about him, and here's what they had to say. They said his 480 AAA plate appearances have featured 148 strikeouts and a 30.8% strikeout percentage. He's also drawn 64 walks at AAA at 13.3%. Uh, walk rate. He's also hit 17 home runs. He's got a slash line of 199, 308 on base, and a 369 slugging. MLB Trade Rumor says that defensively, baseball prospectus has given him, in general, pretty solid grades for his framing and his blocking, both in the majors and the minors. He's also got the ability to play third and first if the Angels absolutely needed him to. So we'll see what happens there. And then finally, Zach Humphreys has only spent time between AA and AAA in his career, but to be fair, he'd be the sixth guy on the list here in case something went wrong with the Angels, and you can never have too much depth if you're the Angels. There's not a lot of info regarding his catching ability from StatCast, but he did have a decent year offensively in Salt Lake. He hit 259, a 351 on base, 381 slugging, and that was good for a 732 OPS, and you and I both know that numbers can be inflated in AAA, especially hitting numbers. But the key to me is that on base percentage of 351, uh, that just shows that he's getting on base and he's had a pretty good to great walk percentage in his career. So Zach Humphreys, again, literally option number six, but at least he can get on base when the moment calls for it. Hey, thanks for making Lockdown Angels your first listen of the day. We really appreciate you being here. Don't forget to head on over to Lockdown Sports today for the first ever 24-7 national sports streaming channel on YouTube. Head on over there, hit subscribe, and get in on the conversation. Friends, you can follow us on Twitter at Lockdown Angels and on Twitter and Instagram at Super Halo Bros. Uh, we would love for you to give us a follow there again. Uh, usually it's Mike and I, Mike is a little bit under the weather today. So I appreciate you being here and hanging out with me for our first episode of roster recap. As we head into 2024, we co cover the catchers today and tomorrow on Locked On angels. We are back five days a week, everybody. So we're here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, baby. Uh, we're going to continue our roster recap and talk about first base is Nolan Shonawell primed for a big year. Is he somebody who we can count on? Uh, who is going to back him up? We're going to get into all of those questions and answer them tomorrow on Lockdown Angels. Until then, my name is John. My brother Mike will be back here with us hopefully tomorrow. We appreciate you being here, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for more Lockdown Angels.